Today I've travelled to Hoddesdon. I'm at uh, Empire Manufacturing with Stuart Wade. We're standing in front of a what is a brand new star sliding head lathe which has been uh, just delivered here. This is the SR32J2 Type B. Um, now have you ever thought, question for you, of replacing two machines with one? Well that's exactly what has happened here. Stuart, uh, well, firstly, how long has this been here? Because it's pretty brand spanking new, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yes. Uh, we got it delivered um, a couple of days before our shutdown, so we've not had a chance to play with it properly yet. But, yeah, it's, uh, we had training yesterday. So You yeah. did. Now, yeah. is it much different to the, the sliders that you currently got from Star? Because you're awash with blue machines here. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Uh, no, not an awful lot, to be honest. It's kind of a combination of two that we've already got. Um, the back working tools, we've got the eight tools on the back um, and the y-axis on there um, which is similar to our SW20 machine and also with it having the non guybush capabilities same as our SB20 machine so yeah, it's kind of like a, a good in between the two of them. Uh, now what's the story with replacing two machines because you've now got a vacant space in your machine shop which is great because yep. often you come in machine shops and there's no space but you've now yep. got an extra space is it going to do the same work Stuart here are you going to get the same production out of just one machine? Well yeah that's the plan um, so we, we've got one more modification to do to the machine. We're, we're changing the tool pattern for an Arno tool pattern, which you can set the blocks in there, and then it's very simple to take the tools out, change the inserts, and you put them back in, and they go straight back into the same place. So um, in terms of tra uh, changing tools and, uh, and setting up, it's a little bit quicker. Um, also, I find with the, although it's only a change of no guide brush being in there, it does seem to be very quick and easy to change these over. Um, our little SB10, I absolutely love doing the setups on it. They just feel really, really quick for some reason. Um, I'm sure it's only about five minutes difference, but yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the idea is that this is obviously the bigger capability in that it can go up to 36 mil bar diameter in non guide brush mode. So it gives. And what were the two machines that you had that have, this has replaced? So the two that have just gone was an SR20R. Um, that was a very old machine now. Um, again, guide bush, um, and an SR SR32J. Um, so kind of. This is an upgrade from that, really. It's a much heavier machine. Uh, yeah. Do you do you assume from that that you're going to be able to, uh, you know, machine harder and faster? Yeah. Again, uh, that's that's probably one of the few things that we'd want um, more so from this machine. Um, you know, it has got uprated spindles, uprated tooling on the sides. Um, the power tools on the side working um, are the ER20 so you can fit bigger tools in there so that is one of the things that, that is going to be a real advantage to us um, when we're machining those bigger parts. And when you laid down the argument to replace the two with the one what were the main what were the main things you were you know you were thinking you were going to benefit from? Obviously if we buy two machines you've got the extra cost involved of, of actually getting two of the machines and, and paying them off um, but also it's, it's the setting um, you know, if we can load up this machine with the same number of jobs and keep it running efficiently then that should outweigh the cost of the extra machine and the, the extra uh, setting time on that as well because you've obviously got to set the two machines as opposed to just the one um, although it's the same number of setups we should hopefully be a little bit more efficient on this um, like I say with the non guybush um, version I think that we'll have it in non guybush mode and keep it in that and um, that's what we did with our other non guybush machine we've got other capabilities with guybush should we need them for longer parts um, but this is this is going to give us uh, that extra scope. And that un I'm assuming then you're going to be unmanned running. You're going to be going home at night, leave it, leaving these machines going. Yeah. From experience, um, they, you come in in the morning and you've never you don't often see any problems with that. I'd like to say never. It's very rare. Yeah, no. Yeah, you know, it, it depends on the job. It depends on the material, you know, and the applications. But you know, when you've got the experience, you generally know what you're going to get from a machine. You know how hard you can push it. Um, we've got the swarf conveyor on this particular machine, so again, it's, it's going to help that overnight running because um, quite often uh, the reason you have to stop is because of swarf build-up, um, which is a horrible reason to have to stop. Are you got, have you got HFT on here? We do that, yes, we do as well, yeah. So, again, so you'll, be able to get, chip it down. you'll be able to, to get the benefit from that too? Yeah, so we've got HFT to help chip it, we've got high-pressure coolant to help you know, improve the tool life and also help clear the swarf. And obviously we've got the, the swap conveyor as well to, to get it out of the machine. Do you think in time you'll replace you know, two or three other machines with one as well in a, a, and almost re reduce the amount of inventory you've got mm. but still output the same result? 
I think possibly with the older machines, we wouldn't want to go too few machines because we, we still have a certain amount of capacity that we need. You know? Once the machines are maxed out on work, then the only option is to get another machine. So you know, we've, we've got to the point where I think those machines that went were a lot older, um, you know, the technology on them is not so good. This was perfect for us. Um, and I think that might happen once more. I don't think we're going to replace and half our machines. Um, I know Star wouldn't like to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, I, and I'm sure uh, by having a more productive solution is going to make you more competitive, which will make yeah. you in the market probably for more technology in the future. Yeah, uh, good so time to buy? Yeah, definitely a good time to buy. Yeah, if you've got to work, then great time to buy. Um, borrowing money's cheap at the moment. Um, yeah, there's a lot of good deals going on at the moment if you look around. So yeah, I think it's a fantastic time to buy.